One of the things I think they're, they're really amazed at is how easily they go into the water if we give them the right cues. And we give them those cues and we do it three times in a row, those children learn it just like that. Those little ones, because they're so smart, they learn to swim to the steps, push down and lift their heads so they won't drown in a bathtub bucket or in a small amount of water, a little pond. But again, you still never leave them alone. You can still never leave them alone in the water. And they learn to, when they fall in, to roll over and turn over their back where they can rest and breathe. And then eventually they learn to swim, turn back over and swim, turn back over and rest on their back where they can breathe and relax, turn back over and swim to safety. And it, that's called the swim, float, swim. What do you do if you fall in the pool? What do you do if you fall in the pool? Uh, airplane. Children have opportunities to get in water everywhere, unfortunately. And it happens quickly, and it's devastating when a child drowns. And I did not understand that children could be taught survival skills as young as 10 months old, and I didn't understand how important that was. The year that Ian drowned, there were 15 out of the 21 children that drowned were under three years old. And um, typically, people don't start teaching kids to swim until they're two and a half or three years old. They think that's early. And then it's a whole other year before they're typically able to save themselves in a situation. So it's urgent to be able to get a child into some safety lessons or for a parent to even start working at home on just basic safety skills with some direction from a professional to teach them how to save themselves if they need to in an emergency. That spring, before Ian died, uh, Jared started swim lessons here at Swim Kids, and he had been here for um, at least four weeks of lessons, and uh, he was obviously out at the pool at the same time Ian was. I do not know if the lessons helped him gain a respect for the, the water, and that's why he didn't get in. Gratefully, he didn't. It would have been even worse tragedy by far um, until he was both boys. I'm um, being grateful for whatever reason that he didn't get in the pool. Um, and we had very seriously considered giving Ian lessons when talked about it six weeks before he died. Um, but we thought you know, it was expensive to have two kids in lessons and our discussion was he's 18, 19 months old, he's too young to have swim lessons. And we really shouldn't bother paying for them right now because he's just not developmentally ready for lessons. And so I was still scared, uh, but I decided that we'd just have to wait until he was ready. Um, obviously, after he died, I realized that we need to do something and no cost is too high to be able to prevent it from happening. The reason this is so special is, number one, the pediatrician is someone that the parents respect and that they will listen to. Plus, they're given a physical reference to take. And then the pediatrician follows up. So there's accountability. See, for years we've been nagging parents, you know, watch them around the pool, watch them, but there's no accountability. And they don't have this physical reference. They can take this reference and go to the website, watersmartbabies.com, and get more information. And uh, that'll give them information about their local area.